Welcome back to this week's episode of EVTV. I'm Emmett. And I'm Michaela. Perm subs are different from our normal substitute teachers. Green and Robinson substitute different classes every day. What does this job mean to them? What do our perm subs do for our school? Let's get to know our permanent subs. You've heard about the teacher shortages in Colorado, especially in Eagle Valley High School. You've seen substitute after substitute in your classes, but who's in charge of taking the roles of teachers who are missing? What does their career look like? I was going to school to become a teacher. And um, right before the pandemic, we decided to move to Colorado. I heard uh, right away that there was a need for uh, different kind of staff at the high school. And I took my opportunity to become a permanent substitute teacher. It was too late when I decided to come to Eagle Valley to get my teaching certification. So I just became a permanent sub for the year, but I've decided teaching is not what I want to do anymore. So I don't know what's gonna happen next year with my day job. Perm subs stay in the school full time with different schedules every day. With my coworkers, you know, they're usually mostly very appreciative because they understand that there is a teacher shortage and that it is very hard to get out of district or other districts subs so for the most part I'm very supported by them so I personally feel like it's the coolest job at the school because um, I have low pressure uh, like teachers have to do their lesson plans and they have to talk to parents and they you know have to probably have a lot harder conversations with students than I do and um, and my my position is much more lax and uh, I don't have to take my work home with me? Um, it's definitely hard because <laughs> every day is a different day. Some days we're in the same classroom all seven periods, and then other days we are in seven different class periods, and then some days we're in the library. We show up to school and we meet with Linda Hatton, and she provides us uh, a schedule. So there's a a chart that basically says which teachers are out and where the need is. So um, we basically get placed depending on um, depending on where she sees we're best fit. Both Robinson and Green have their own thoughts and experiences on how they are treated while teaching. Some days are enjoyable and some they just have to tough it out through the rest of the day. When I first started, uh, kids asked me all the time if I was a super senior. Um, I did just turn 23 and I do get told a lot that I look a lot younger than I am. So I think that's definitely part of why I don't want to teach is because, I mean, I would just be 23 next year. So it's, I'd, I would be the same and it would just be different, but I don't think it would be different enough to where it makes me want to be a teacher. I don't mind, I would do it when I'm older, but definitely not anytime soon. I notice mostly that students will try to take advantage of the teacher not being there. And I have to remind them that they are still responsible for their own grade and for getting their own work done. Um, I've heard stories that look different with teachers who are coming in randomly, going to different schools, and they don't quite have that relationship with the kids where they might try extra to take advantage of them. Um, but I do feel like most kids, because they know me, they're willing to do work <laughs> or at least be respectful. Some of the students walk in and they're like, oh yes, it's Mr. Green. And then some students are like, oh, it's Mr. Green. Um, it just depends on the person and the class because we kind of know when we get assigned, we're like, oh, we have that class today. Or sometimes we're like, oh, great. Like, you know, we have this class today. So each day is just, like I said, it's a new adventure. From Eagle Valley Student Media, this has been Emmett Brown and Michaela Teehee. Next year at Eagle Valley, our grading system will be changing. To hear more, let's go to Mary Ann Stavny with the Eagle County School District. Next year, the traditional ABCDF scale is going to be replaced with a 1, 2, 3, 4 scale, along with a new grading practice called standards-based grading. But most students aren't sure what this means. 
Standards-based learning and grading ultimately means you have a body of evidence. You are assessed multiple times on what you're learning, so you have multiple opportunities to demonstrate what you know, and you're not supposed to be penalized if you don't know it at the beginning. In other words, it's not a race. People learn at different rates. They come in at different places. So I wouldn't want people to think that standards-based learning means all of your learning experiences are standardized and all the same. That's not the case. Um, different teachers bring their creativity and their expertise to whatever content that they're teaching. But we want to make sure that all kids are having access to high quality learning and instruction. And so really what it does is it, it makes sure that we have some equity in our classrooms um, so that things are aligned and they're coherent. This is an effort to reduce redundancy between different classes to hopefully ensure that a student isn't repeating things they've already learned, as opposed to the old way of teaching in which that is a very real possibility. It wasn't systemic. Now you might have had some really great collaboration between teachers and pockets of the district, but there was no system in place to ensure that we were addressing and teaching um, the same kinds of content at the same time as a kid progressed through the system. Along with a new way of teaching, there's a new grading scale. So instead of just getting a 100 point scale, right, that you currently get when you're graded with an A, B, C, D, or F, you're actually now looking at what's your proficiency level? What do you know and what don't you know? When you're developing and you get a two, it doesn't have the same impact out of four that 40% does out of 100%. Along with this, homework will no longer be graded. Yes, we're not supposed to be grading homework. If it's just practice, we're not grading that. When we put that into the grading system, it begins to inflate a grade when a student maybe just doesn't know the content. Okay, if kids are getting A's but they can't pass the AP assessment, how is it that they got the A in the first place? And often that's because we're giving credit for things like homework. It will work exactly the same in terms of a weighted grade. So right now, if you get an A in an AP class, it's, it's not worth a 4.0, it's worth a 5.0. There's that added point if you're taking college level credit. It will be exactly the same in this new system. Um, AP courses are designed within, within the district, and so yes, you're gonna be doing AP on the one to four scale. Um, DE is a little bit different because we work in um, partnership with Colorado Mountain College. Ultimately, whether standards-based grading will work or not is yet to be seen. Only time will tell. For EVTV, this has been Jaden and Sam. For those of you who weren't able to attend graduation last Saturday, here's a recap. Graduation is a very special time for everyone. It's a time to commemorate and finalize the K-12 journey. Good morning and welcome. For those of you that do not know me, my name is Andy Wheeler, and I've had the privilege of being a teacher and a coach to these amazing human beings for the last four years of their high school careers. Los que fueron la lección. Quiero agradecer especialmente a mis padres porque sin ellos yo no podría estar aquí. Han sido y seguirán siendo mi motivación. Much how all of you have your own motivations, keep those in mind. Use those to help you be better and appreciate everything and everyone that's helped you get to where you are today. Be proud of, we can, of what you can accomplish and will continue to. I'd like to leave you with a piece of advice my parents bestowed upon me. Echenle ganas. It is with fear, pride, and perseverance I want to say, congratulations class of 2023. We made it. Oh. Every student has learned something new about themselves. And now it's time for them to start the new journey. Yeah, we just graduated, we're gonna start working, and then after these three months of summer, we're gonna go out, we're gonna go to college, start a construction company, start building houses all around the valley. Thank you.
What's next? Um, I'm gonna work until I find something to do. I don't know. Um, I'm gonna go play soccer at the Academy of Art in San Francisco and study fashion design. That's it. Yes, sir. Be yourself. Uh, don't be too upset on the friendships you lose. Um, look forward to the future. Don't dwell on the past. Don't be afraid to do what makes you happy. Everyone's gonna judge at the end of the day and you just gotta do what keeps making you happy because at the end of the day, the only person who's gonna be there for you is you. Stay in school, pass your classes, have fun, ditch a little bit, miss a class once in a while, but stay in school. <laughs> Class 2023, like I talked about in AP European history, that was many years ago, and the words of great Otto von Bismarck, stay strapped with knowledge or get clapped by ignorance. Congratulations, go get them. Graduating class, I think Mr. Doan said it best, but the number one thing I could say as well is be yourself and don't forget who you are. Thank you for tuning in in this week's episode of EDTV. See you next year. Nos vemos el próximo año. Woo!